Hi everyone, welcome to my channel or welcome back if you are new. I wanted to share with you an almost three year update of our kitchen renovation and remodel that my husband and I did ourselves and things I regret and things that I am loving. So I know it's kind of an odd time because if you're doing a renovation right now, it's kind of hard to go out and get supplies because we're stuck at home. Um, so I just wanted to kind of share a different type of video and things that you could do here in the future if you want to do projects in your kitchen or if you're stalled and you want to plan it out or something like that. So I'm giving this video a like if you enjoy it and let's get started. So the first thing we I did, actually I had a friend come over and help some too, was paint the cabinets white. They were a puke green. This is a 1960s house and they were not a pretty green. I don't know if I have footage or um, a picture of the color, but I'll try to find one if I can. Um, so I painted them all white and did that myself with a bright white cabinet paint. And um, they're holding up decently well. As you can tell, they're very flat and no texture, no curves in the cabinets at all. Um, another thing that we did ourselves was find new hardware. Now, I spent $10 on the hardware and it was, well, there were 40 holes for the hardware, 40 handles. They were at a garage sale. It was a random spur of the moment find. And that is kind of one regret I have is I'm not in love with the hardware. It's a little too modern, not quite farmhousey enough. My style really transitioned more into the farmhouse. I would prefer more like a bronze or something like that. So $10 though so for $40, I can't come, or for 40 pulls, I can't complain. Um, and one thing that someone pointed out who watched my butcher block installation video was the poles are horizontal instead of vertical. I guess that's what the previous owners had done and I didn't even notice. But yeah, that would be one thing that we could change in the future if we desire to do so. But right now it's fine, it works just fine. So um, yeah, we installed, did the painting and um, the handles and I even have, I have a few cabinets over on this side that you can't see that I had enough cabinet handles for. All right, so then also the next step after that in the fall was taking down our tile backsplash, like floor tile backsplash and countertop. The previous owners, few like owners before them even, I don't know why they thought bathroom tile, um, floor tile would look good on a countertop. It was not very pretty and not easy to clean up. And funny thing is, it is in the bathroom on the wall and on the floor. It was in our front porch on the floor and it's also in our back porch on the floor. So these people must have gotten a great deal on them. So I destroyed all that tile and threw it away. I was done with that. And then we installed the backsplash, the subway tile ourselves. And I'll try to find where we got all it from and put it in the description box below if you're interested. Then we did the grout ourselves. We did make a mistake with the grout and we got it too gritty at first, so you needed to add more water. That's one tip, make sure it's not gritty because it was just falling off in clumps. So then we had to go back and um, recover it with the grout. But I love how it looks. Like you can't tell that it's a little bit gritty and I'm okay with that because it's a DIY. It's not our forever home. This is not going to be the house we live in forever. Um, so then we installed the butcher block countertop. We got these from Lumber Liquidators, uh, two eight foot slabs, and I think it was $500 for both slabs. My husband cut everything himself. I'll put the how to install butcher block countertop video in the description box for you. But he installed the countertops, cut it for the inlaid sink as well, cut it to fit just right and I love it. We did not put a finish on top of it so it is like the natural raw wood on top for the countertops and I do have to oil this once a month. At first it's a process to oil. It's like every day for a while and then once a week so it is a process if you do want butcher block countertops but it is super affordable compared to other hard surface countertops um, and I love the look of it so much. And then the farmhouse sink we got from Ikea, we ordered it. It is the Reliance brand. And this was the, like, the most expensive part of the whole project. It was a $400 sink, but I wanted two slots. I know farmhouse sinks often are one big 
basin, one big bowl. I wanted two, one for the washing dishes and one for the drying rack. And um, I love it. It is very, very heavy, durable. I did drop a pan once in there and left a teeny little chip, which I am so sad about. But I like how it looks, how it fits with the butcher block countertops so well. Um, I don't know if Ikea is still carrying this sink or not, but if they are, I'll try to find it as well. Um, and then we put in the faucet ourselves too. Now, I have found a faucet on Amazon, but due to us inlaying the sink and the butcher block, which is really thick on top, um, the piping wiring did not fit all the way down like it should. Um, so we had to find one that was longer. And so it was $90. It was an as is faucet and it matched our handle. So that's why I got this um, like rubbed silver color. And I liked it at the time, but now that my style's changing a little bit, I would prefer like a brushed nickel, a bronze color, but it is okay. I think it looks really good with the handles of the cabinets. It matched perfectly, so I was okay with that. Um, so the one drawback for that, one regret, is I almost now wish that we did not inlay the sink because with the butcher block not having a finish on it, and using the hand all the time to wash the dishes, it drips water onto the countertop and can start to warp it. So we always have to put a towel underneath the handle when we're washing dishes because it drips that water and I don't want it to warp the wood countertop. And you do have to wipe up any water that may be sitting on the countertop rather quickly after it spills or after you had wet dishes sitting on it because it leaves rings but you know that makes it look lived in and used and more worn and rustic anyways which i am totally okay with too so that is what we have done we did the light you can kind of see a little bit of it above me um this light we did find on amazon it is like a fan looking light with edison bulbs and we got the bulbs in the brightest light possible I just love it. We installed that a year ago. Everything else was about two and a half, three years ago. So before we had like a fluorescent light bulb, get rid of those if you have those in your kitchen. And then we put in an LED, just long light fixture as well. And then I, I just thought, no, I'm done. I want something different. And so this is a um, nickel or uh, like bronze color light so yes i have mixed metals in the kitchen but i think it's okay to mix metals as long as you're okay with it and you you love it in your place those are the updates we've done in the last three years and hopefully it encouraged you to diy your kitchen or continue with it if you are um like i said give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it if you have any questions if i missed something let me know in the comments below uh, I'll try to put everything in the description that I can think of and ask my husband more detailed descriptions of things I may have not said correctly because I'm not the best with knowing terms and he knows most of this DIY stuff that I'm not the best at. So anyway, subscribe if you're new. I'd love to have you join my YouTube community. So um, yeah, with that, I hope you're having a blessed and wonderful day and staying safe and healthy. All right, I'll talk with you in my next video next week. All right, bye.